Friday uh, morning and luckily we've got uh, John Carney in studio with us. I'm sure some of you may have seen our first segment with him. It was a short one, just an introduction into this conversation we're about to have with South Africa's godfather of theatre and screen, this multi-award winning actor, director and playwright, Dr. John Carney. It, it really is an honour to look across the table and see you here because, I mean, you are a living legend. Uh, do you feel that way? No. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm glad no. to be the one to tell you that you are a living legend. No, you, you just sometimes uh, um, amused and uh, humbled by the attention you get. And sometimes I also feel very happy with how people just ignore me yes. and get on with their lives. Yeah. Yeah, especially when I go back to Port Elizabeth, New Brighton, is then people meet me in the street and you know, hey, John. How are you doing, Doc? How are you doing? But the best is the elderly people who says, do you know this man? He says, no. Do you know <laughs> the old man, Tatukan, you know, with the big hat and that van, chef van? Yeah. says, yes, that's his son. <laughs> and I'm thinking, I what about it. my CV? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> what, what about, about all I've achieved? About all you me? remember me as my father's son. Exactly. That is beautiful for me. Yeah, it is nice. It is nice to go home and, and sort of just live in anonymity. Let's, let's continue to talk about your past because we're going to work our way up to okay. today and the big announcements that were made recently. But let's not go there because that's, that's, the, the, uh, that's the future. I want to still talk about the past where, I mean, times were tough for you. I mean, it was really not easy. I mean, when you and um, uh, Winston. Winston and Shona and Athel Fugard yes. got together to really revolutionize theater. Uh, did you think at that time that that's what you were about to do? The problem with history is that the simple people make it and then the very important people write it. When it was happening, it was just what we were dealing with. All we wanted to do was to put a play at the St. Stephen's Church Hall and have fun. And there were people who were blocking the entrance to the theater. And there were people who were threatening people who were coming to see the place. We were being visited by the security police and just to talk and nonsense to, to intimidate you. And all of this at that stage, you know, as young people, we felt, yeah. You know, there was a time in the 60s, you know, if you had never been detained or harassed by the police, you needed to question yourself. What's wrong with me? Yes. I, I, I need to break a window <laughs> just to be arrested so that I could say, yeah, I was arrested too. I was arrested too. too. Yeah. yeah, but when you were arrested, I mean, that was not fun. You know, for something completely ridiculous, you were detained for 23 days, you were thrown into jail purely for going into rural areas and performing these two amazing plays. Winston, John and I were performing in Butterworth in the town hall and for the first time really there was like 50-50, over 400 people, black and white and I had a feeling that things are not going to go well tonight. Mm -hmm. There was a tension, you know, and suddenly you realize the exits were blocked and as we took the curtain call, both Winston and I were arrested. One taken that side, the other one taken that side. And then on my way out, I saw a young man I know, as the police were hustling us into cars, taking us out of Butterworth. I just gave Athol Fugard the number, just his telephone number, hoping that he will, you know, call. Yeah. And while I was sitting in Tata at police station, handcuffed, ready to be processed and detained, the phone rang. And the lieutenant warrant officer, Wu Furi, said, hello, John Kani? No. No, he's not been detained here. We've never heard of that. And you're sitting Thank right you, sir. opposite him. I'm sitting right next to him. Mm -hmm. I feel like saying, no, no, I'm here, I'm, I'm here, here. I'm arrested. Right and yeah. then, of course, it made international headlines. And you were saying by the next day... By the next day. It was huge. It was huge all over. Demonstrations, work pickets in the streets. You know, I didn't know about that for the first 15, year, 15 days. Yeah, yeah. Because it was just quiet in solitary confinement until I got a piece of paper under the cell. And then I opened it very slowly... And there it was, two actors in South Africa, John Gunn and Winston Jonah, detained by the apartheid government. That was the first night I fell asleep mm. because I knew now the world knows they have me, yeah. so they're, gonna, they're not going to kill me. Yeah. And it was fantastic. So you were there for 23 days. How, yeah. how did you get out? I mean, what were the circumstances for your release? And I mean, how did they explain it away? Well, they put pressure absolutely on the South African government. People from Paris, Sydney, all over the world wrote to their congressmen, to their prime ministers to send representation. And P.W. Border simply said, well, they are detained in Transkai. It's got nothing to do with us. 
And in the meantime, Transgar had not been independent yet. Yeah. And they said, well, if that is the case, then you can have them. <laughs> because we don't know why you asked us to hold them. Goodness me. So they took us to the border in Kumcha, just before King Williamstown, and said, this is it. You can cross the bridge, get out. Yeah. You know, I mean, this, is, this wasn't the only time. Uh, I'm not, not saying that you were behind bars for this one, but this, this <laughs> act that you did on stage, in a play called Miss Julie, um, you decided to do this. I'm going to get up and I'm going to do what you did, okay? <laughs> I'm, I'm, a, I'm allowed to do this. You went to a white woman and oh went my like God. that. <laughs> and what happened? You were stabbed 11 times. You were yes. intimidated. People went mad because you kissed a white woman, as you did now, on live television, but you kissed her on a stage. What was that like? I mean, on, this doesn't make sense to me. It's the memories of uh, an elderly man. They're wonderful. You see me laughing. It wasn't a laughing matter then. Bobby Heaney and, we, and uh, Sandra Prince and I decided at the Baxter Theatre to do Strindberg play, Miss Julie. When it was first performed in 1888 yeah. in Stockholm, it created a controversy because John, my character, is a footman, is a servant, and he was seduced by the master's daughter. Mm. So I didn't seduce her. She, she seduced, seduced you. me. I seduced you too. I didn't kiss her. <laughs> she kissed me. Yeah. So I didn't understand what was the big problem about, but it was a huge thing. The late Dr. Trenner made a uh, play to be sold out because it was right in the front page of the Sunday Times with a picture of, they were about, lips just about to touch. Yes. And he says, so sorry to come to lake as we don't forget me. In his grave, he had a vision of a non-racial, normal society in our country. Goodness me. You were stabbed 11 times for that. Yes, on my way home with my wife and suddenly all hell broke loose. We were warned, you know, we constantly would get information that there is going to be a hit. There's a hit list it's going to be, these people are going to be killed and all that, you know. First I got from Pesic Koboza, who was the uh, editor of The World. And then, of course, you get that uh, Dr. Motana, Winnie Mandela, Bishop Tutu, uh, so-and-so. And then John Kana kept thinking, what's my list doing there? Those are political activists. I'm just an actor. Because yeah. the name was there. And suddenly, one night, all hell broke loose. The car was smashed. And uh, I actually, I woke up in, in, uh, in hospital. And while in hospital, there was a commotion. There's nurses saying, oh, it's John Kenny. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Get sister so-and-so who's plastic surgery. This guy can't show his scars on his face. And a young doctor, White, says, who the hell is this? This is a very famous actor. He, not wanting the media in the hospital while he was in charge, took me to a place nobody could find me. Wow. So when the security police found out that I wasn't lying down there dead, they back to the hospital searching for me to complete the job. But they walked the five floors of the Livingston Hospital and couldn't find me. He decided to hide me, this young white doctor, at the infect isolation ward for infectious diseases. That's where I was with my wife. Wow. So white people and police were trying to kill me. A young white doctor saves my life that night by hiding me in the hospital. Mm. I have been trying to find this young man's name just to say thank you. Now, it's for over 40 years I've been trying to say, who are you? Can I say thank you? Who is he? Do you remember I his don't name? Know. You don't even remember his name? I don't know. Everybody just says, I don't know who was in charge that night. No, I don't know. <clears throat> Let's take a break here on the program. We'll continue this conversation with John Carney after this. <laughs>